This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 721 Tuesdays. We've been talking professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Compound in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, with a whole crew with us. First of all, from Beacon, New York, the only Mayhemer with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE, it is Mad Mike. Oh, Sorg, my stomach is full of Becky Lynch. Uh, but, <laughs> Ice cream sandwiches. Oh, Ice wow. cream sandwiches. That is Sorry. a horrible there, pickup line. There is a lag in the internet. That's... Okay, I got you. I got you. <laughs> also, coming to us courtside at Casa de Carlins is Matt Carlins. Sorg, if you want to know what this tastes like, you've got to listen to gold. But, that but is... I'll give you a hint. It's not good. It's not, um, it, what is that for the audio? Oh, I'm sorry for the audio. This is Mountain Dew Liberty Brew. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's blue. It doesn't taste like. Is that what freedom tastes like? I hope not. <laughs> I was hoping freedom would taste <laughs> more like Baja Blaster Code Red. Oh, but, good. Yeah. Code Red. Also with us, he is a manager from Farnsworth Internationals. Investments? International. Investor, international investments. I'm just going to go with that. Farnsworth is with us. <laughs> Hi, kids. How's everyone? Hi. Announcer extraordinaire in indie professional wrestling uh, himself. I'm glad you could join us. Happy to be here. Excellent. So this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're going to get into things, including the world debut of, uh, I believe, musical guest, musical guest Matt Carlin's. Uh, we're going to have the world wait. debut very shortly of the first ever, I believe, the first ever Wrestling Mayhem Show music video, um, a fine project that we're going to talk to Matt about here and, and and some inspiration of that. And hopefully it will get well soon for somebody. Uh, but in the meantime, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can drop us an email at that email address. Good times. Good times at wrestling mayhem show dot com four one two two zero six WMS zero is the hotline at mayhem show on the Twitter. Of course, uh, follow the wrestling mayhem show page and group. And in the group, we have a lot of great discussions going on over there. So please join that. I think we have something like seven hundred members uh, uh, chatting over there, uh, especially with the crazy news that's been coming up over the last couple of weeks in the world of professionalized wrestling. Um, and uh, of course, uh, please subscribe to us if you're catching us on any of the feeds we are currently live on the sorgatron media twitch the wrestling mayhem show periscope youtube and facebook live uh please give us a like give us a share uh and and let other people know the mayhem is going down right now if you will if you catch us on a podcast later on i hope you've subscribed on your apple podcast on your google podcast or stitcher speaker wherever you like to do that iheart radio uh wherever fine podcasts are apt um please also give a share for this week's episode if you like what's going on or give a review of the show that goes a long way to get in front of more people also thank you to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show including our uh fan of the show level bo diggity Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby FJ Town, and Team Hammerfist. Our friends at the Poppy Club level, Bradley Ruthers, Dave Potter, Daniel Towery, and Tina Keys. And at the Pizza Club level, Doc Remedy and Kyle Turner. And at the manager level, OccupyProWrestling.com and Farnsworth Investments. There it is in front of me. I'm usually not off the top of my head. Who is here? Who is here with us? Wait, what was that? What is that scary movie look you're doing right now? <laughs> what? Uh, what? I don't judge how you look, Sorg. I am. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> That's fine. We'll call it accent lighting. Accent lighting. You, you only get that at the manager level. So. that's that's right that's right we ship you a man we ship you an accent light so um but you guys can support the show as well at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show um so like i said at the top of the show we have a special uh presentation here matt 
can you tell me what the hell we're about to watch or listen to, depending on where you're at? Uh, yes, this is a TRL world premiere music video exclusive. Um, so back in, it's been a little bit over a month. Back in late March, our friend Bobby F.J. Town, uh, who had been vocally, at least, all right, on Twitter, vocally, um, as vocal as you could be on Twitter, um, who had been voicing his um, his exhaustion with seeing uh, Charlotte Flair on nearly every night of the week on WWE programming. Mm. Um, this happens from time to time, so, you know, mm-hmm. we can only take so much of a good thing. I mean, we, we got sick of John Cena for crying out loud. Could you believe that happened? Multiple times. Anyway, the point of it is, Bobby's going on and on on Twitter. He's had enough of Charlotte. And just starts ranting and raving and just all capsing. And um, our friend The Riz, he was kind of looking in on this conversation too. And and at one point, I just replied to Bobby. And I'm like, I'm going to take all of your angry Charlotte tweets and I'm going to turn them into a song. And then he continued to all caps and angry tweet at me until I very clearly had the basis for a very solid set of lyrics. I thought so. Uh, the only problem is I am not what you would technically term a musician. Mm-hmm. So That's I did not have anyone yeah. to play music for me. But through the magic of the internet, I did find some people who make music, put it out there for the world to see. And sometimes it's free. Sometimes you got to, you know, put a little cheddar on it so you can get a little bit of the rights to it. But uh, we found, I'm not going to be so humble. I found me, myself, I found this music, uh, no lyrics, just music. It's perfect. And, you know, I've just kind of bounced the words around in my brain for a few days. And I thought, you know what? This might work. So I did it. I got the music. I arranged the lyrics. I sang the lyrics. I took the lyric. I took the song. I made a music video out of it. Mm-hmm. That's the story. It's a, it, it, this song is about a young man on Twitter who has seen Charlotte Flair one too many times. Okay. And I think it has, I think the lyrics are deep and insightful. And I think um, everyone can take something from this music. And I'm hoping that uh, this is going to be a real uh, we are the world kind of moment that we can unite all of wrestling fandom together in one voice. And uh, this can be a really uniting uh, moment. And in all honesty, you know, we need some levity right now. So let's have some fun and hopefully this gives everyone a laugh. All right. And hopefully it gives Charlotte a laugh too. I really hope she sees this and that she enjoys it too. So, all right, let's cue it. A little bit of text at the beginning here. Yay! Charlotte is on two shows now. When they mentioned the brand invitational thing, didn't they say a superstar can only go to another brand three times a year? Charlotte is well past that this week alone! Get out of here, Charlotte! We were having a great night! Get out of here, Charlotte! We were having a great night! Get out of here, Charlotte! We were having a great night! Charlotte 40 shows us on again tonight. Yeah, you're Charlotte, we were having a great night. Yeah, you're Charlotte, we were having a great night. Yeah, you're Charlotte, we were having a great night. Charlotte 40 shows us on again tonight. Charlotte clearly doesn't abide by the brand split she's been on every show in the last month. We don't need Charlotte on every show, she's female Randy Orton! <laughs> Not that I don't like Charlotte, I just am tired, I don't know, I just want it to stop. L-O-L yeah, you're Charlotte, we were having a great night. 
Yeah, you're Charlotte, we were having a great night. Yeah, you're Charlotte, we were having a great night. Charlotte 40 shows us on again tonight. Yeah, you're Charlotte, we were having a great night. Yeah, you're Charlotte, we were having a great night. Yeah, you're Charlotte, we were having a great night. Yeah, you're Charlotte, we were having a great night. Yeah, you're Charlotte, we were having a great night. Yeah, you're Charlotte, we were having a great night. Yeah, you're Charlotte, we were having a great night. Charlotte 40 shows us on again tonight. See you tomorrow night, Charlotte. I miss you already. There you go. And by the way, if you were on video, I queued him a couple times. Uh, Mike was definitely jamming out to that. <laughs> Matt, Matt, it's it's a nice song. Matt, even before I got my hands on it, yes. Matt, Bobby, I hate you. <laughs> because I know when I cannot sleep at three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> the thing I'm going to hear. Before I fall asleep is Yeah Charlotte we were having a great night Yeah Charlotte we were having a great night Charlotte 40 shows is on again wow. tonight wow. I mean it's catchy oh, I, you know, I can't sort I just I took somebody else's music I took somebody else's words they went together <laughs> done magic <laughs> it's it's amazing So wow I, um, um and I hate you Yeah Bobby I hate you Charlotte, I fucking hate you. Uh, <laughs> Randy Orton, just for measure, I fucking hate you too. <laughs> you made a cameo, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Farnsworth, you just kind of walked into this. Um, oh, oh, your, 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 your thoughts on this song? I mean, I was having a great night, and then uh, oh, hold on, Charlotte too. <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic! So I, I have to be careful how far I moved on that joke because I, in honor of uh, Lords, I am doing the show sans pants. Oh yeah, so. oh yeah. As I mean, none of us is. Let, let's be honest, none of us wear have worn pants for for like three months. So. I don't even know what pants are anymore. No, no, you, you you haven't even like Mike hasn't even left that room in three months. So well, <laughs> keep in mind for a good solid month and a half of this quarantine, my air conditioning has not worked. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, yeah, man. I mean, it's working now, so it's fine. Yes, but that you know, when you're in a routine, why change it? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and so th this is interesting timing that we 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 uh, that you finished this video to, to, for this week, uh, because it's timely because Charlotte is actually injured right now, correct? She completely disappeared <laughs> from television. It's I like, can't believe it. But it's, it's like um, we willed her away. It Bobby willed her away. I didn't do anything, Sorg. Like I said, I'm I'm just a vessel for all of this. Like I didn't do a anything. Vessel. All right, all right. This is all Bobby. All right, this is all Bobby. You know, maybe maybe it's like a curse. What the, like bo if, the Bobby curse? If you say, no, the song. Mm -hmm. Like maybe setting those tweets to that music was like a siren song that drove her away from television. Like, uh, hey, you Charlotte, we were having a great night. Oh, Maybe man. if you say that nice enough, song, it's like the anti show sword and not worry about getting pulled down to. That's a nice feeling, right? That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that it is. Well, we'll we'll find out. Uh, <laughs> Maybe it's the anti Beetlejuice. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. I get it. It's it's or, or wait who who's um or it's like the anti I'm sorry oh, wait wait what, like, what is, you, wait, what is you happening say, you say get out of here Charlotte we've been having a great night three times Charlotte disappears from your television hold, screen hold on did, did did Matt just get like a run in like from like his door is open is it was it Jen or is it just somebody from across the street it's definitely Jen it's Jen okay I the video yeah. wasn't popping up so get out of here Carla we were having a great <laughs> night. Yeah, your Carlos, we were having so, a great. So night. the 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 obvious conclusion of of this hideous peak is if we can get Bowling for Super, me first, and the Gimme Gimmies to cover this. Mm -hmm. Um, just seems absolutely you perfect. Might, I have to change the music video. The the video definitely has to change. There's it's it's definitely um, it's definitely um, problematic uh, as oh, far as oh go. yeah, like I I was just looking at that and I'm like. Boy, I pity the poor soul who would have to go through and find all that footage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, somebody already did. So, 
Um, so so that is our Charlotte world premiere. Please let us get uh, let us know the shitty game. Game. It, you ain't having it, a it, great it's, all, it's all love, right? We yeah. all, oh, absolutely. Don't really to go away forever. We are no. all kind of no. We're okay I, with Charlotte. I'd be okay Reason. if she goes away for a while. You have you you get this a while like you 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 just like so and so just needs to disappear for a while. Well, so no, this, this I, has been I, an ongoing having, theory with you. I was having this discussion with with uh, some other wrestle friends earlier today. Okay, and and they were saying that consistently Charlotte is the best of the three remaining horsewomen. Yes. Oh and yes. To Absolutely. That, oh no, I firmly disagree. Okay. Charlotte has not changed her character since she entered WWE. I she hasn't like and okay. like it, it's it's evidence because whenever she's on television, you don't know if she's a heel or a face. Okay, because she okay. acts the exact same way, regardless. I can't. I don't think that's a state of them growing and being consistent. Um, I, I think maybe she was on to something that already works. So, so why change too much? But does it work? Cena did. Hey, Cena didn't change for like six but, years. But with Cena, it works. Okay. I, I, it also worked for her father. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, she, but she's not her father. No, no, but she, she's not. That's she's not even close to her father. On promo. Oh, hold on, Farsworth, you're getting run over right. a little bit. What were you saying there? They're, that's clearly what they're patterning her after, or if I'm not saying it right, powering her after. So, so, so yeah. do you, uh, uh, you? So, what do you, what do you think, Farns? The, the consistency argument, like, I mean, she, it, it feels to me that she kind of delivers on on matches um, fairly consistently. I, I mean, I'm. I will say she's not Ric Flair. No mm-hmm. one is Ric Flair. No, but. I think she probably had the, she got the closest to reading the how to Ric Flair rule book. Mm-hmm. And I think she's consistent enough. I, I mean, I agree with everyone. I agree with everyone, including Charlotte, that she's on too much, but they're putting that on her because they feel that they are low on options. Mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily agreeing with them, but that's yeah. that. I mean, it's, Vince has this habit of what I do, like, oh, no, something's gone wrong. I'll go back to what. Hung up for a second there. See if he comes back. I think he was saying going back to what works. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like like the old traditionals, like Charlotte, like your Roman Reigns. Yeah, you're kind of doing the same. Like you, you're kind of hearing the. I, I forget which, it, it, like Humberto Carrillo or somebody is you keep speak, You keep hearing, oh, he's the next Eddie Guerrero or something, right? But um, <sighs> you know, but I, hate, he, I hate when they do that. But then then you pattern him over that person that worked that was you know cutting age cutting edge for their time, right? So yeah. Mm. I, I just I just hate when they only say that about the Latin Americans. Yeah, wrestlers. it's a little it's a little too on point, isn't it? So like I mean. honestly, because Angel Garza is closer to being the next Shawn Michaels mm. than than the next A Guerrero. I can see that. Like, yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that. All right, he's back. He's back on his go. phone. There he is. Trying with a different device. We we presumed your 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 in which where you're getting at and went from there with the conversation, Farnsworth. Uh, so you got through the whole cure for cancer and the defenestration of problems. Yeah, yeah, we got that. <laughs> we got that. Yeah, yeah, um, yes. And also, I'm not able to get that chorus out of my head. <laughs> Oh, fantastic! Um, but uh, I, no, so so she's so so now you know. Uh, I said we got you got your wish. Unfortunately, due to the injury, you got a world without Charlotte, which means just uh, Bailey and Sasha are everywhere now. So, are, are we sure it's injury? Uh, everything I had heard was elective surgery. That's what I heard too. Uh, I hear that, and if it's a woman in the WWE, then sadly, my first thought is you know chest mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it could be anything it could be anything um so you know we'll see uh we'll see where that goes and maybe it was just like hey i i because I, I, in interviews she was even saying she was on too many shows like yeah. you know 
But, you know, it's like, hey, I'm consistent, so I'm going to get thrown on a lot of stuff. You know, I get that, but I, I am kind of on a lot right now. And maybe that was a little bit of like, let's have me take a break kind of thing. So, I mean, I'm sure things aren't as stringent now as the schedule would be, for sure, um, if they were still doing all the live tours and everything like that. But still, like, identifying, you know, hey, it's three shows and I'm all over them. You know, that, that's, that's kind of a good self-awareness in the long run, right? Yeah, I mean, and, that, and now it's Bailey and Sasha doing the same thing. Yeah, it's it's and it's like that's all we know to do. It's like we have um, you know uh, seven hours of television every week, and, and how are we still oversaturating people across those seven hours? Oh, know? it's very easy. Yeah, very I don't easy to do. complaining about Sasha and Bailey being on every single night. Maybe we'll get there, but mm -hmm. we're not there yet. Well, they're Anytime. more they're more entertaining. Sasha and Bailey. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's also been a while since we've gotten like a really heavy dose of Sasha too. Like feels like she just kind of reemerged. I turned off Raw within 10 seconds this week because it started with Sasha and Bailey doing the Sasha and Bailey stick. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm not, I, I'm not faulting them. Oh, so much as I like, this is what they're running with and it just does not work. for me. That's a shame. I, I feel like Bailey's been like the MVP of of WWE for the past month. I agree. I get more out of Bailey than just about anybody else on the WWE TV right now. And I think overall, like the women are outperforming the guys right now. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Sasha, With Bailey, the exception of Natalia. Nikki, the iconics, <laughs> etc. You know, it's just Asuka. I always forget her. But um yeah, it's like it feels like they've Taking the ball. I would, I would say Oscar is the MVP. I, I Oscar and Iro Shirai have mm -hmm. been the the mm -hmm. two female performers that I have enjoyed the most out of all of them. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited for Sasha versus Io tomorrow night on <sighs> NXT. Ooh. That that has my attention because I, I haven't watched NXT live in a while just because I've been trying to. I've been trying to keep one night wrestling free, and that happens to be Wednesdays, because mm -hmm. <laughs> I because I default end up watching SmackDown because we're usually just eating pizza and there's nothing else on. Yeah, and I and I watch Raw because we do the wrap up. So I've been trying not to watch my Wednesday shows live, but that Sasha vs. Io match that that has mm -hmm. my attention. <laughs> mm -hmm. so I will say, from their sort is that um, Rob Brown pointed this out. Zelina Vega has been great too. Oh yeah. Yeah, and she picked yeah. up that ball from like the first show when they were trapped in that performance center. She was front and center carrying like segment after segment after segment. Mm -hmm. She's been really good. Zelina has been the Bobby Heenan of Raw. Uh, Farnsworth, you were saying? Um, oh, I was just going, I was going to say, I don't have a problem with Bailey or Sasha in the ring. Yeah. I, I'm I'm very interested in the match. I just I don't want to. I really don't want Bailey calling the match while Sasha wrestles. I think it'd be it would take away from a great match. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dig it. So I mean, and, and we talked about last night. You know, I I, I feel like Raw Raw felt less of a slog than it usually has. It's strangely, I think WWE is finally coming into this. I'm calling it a studio wrestling era for them. We can, I guess, we can call it the COVID era era of sorts. But uh, you know, I, I still, I'm still weirded out by the plastic. But uh, <laughs> but 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 generally, like it, it feels like there has been a little bit less of I'm going to stand here in the ring and give a 15 minute promo because that seems to stand out even more when you don't have a real crowd, right? <laughs> Like there's more actual interactions. We started with the fight. We started with Samoa Joe hurting cats. Uh, that was basically the women's division uh, to begin the show. Uh, it was, which was a great sight to tune into. Um, that's also when everybody discovered that Samoa Joe had apparently grown his hair out and nobody noticed. Um, so th that was an interesting discovery there. So, um, oh, sorry, we've all grown our hair out. It'd be, but, hey, I got a haircut last week, so I don't. I, I got. I got. I'm good. I'm not all. Okay, I'm well, still disappointed. I did but, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of course, Farnsworth. 
um but anyways we'll talk a little bit more about that and the effects going on there's been a lot of news and a lot of shifts in the landscape of pro wrestling in general uh especially you know coming off of what we talked about last week um with the uh, uh speaking out movement as well as uh, uh covid concerns with wwe and, and and everything else so we'll touch on that a little bit and of course later in the show we do have our homework from jacob edwin uh to go over that was ecw's one night stand psychosis and ray mysterio and of course i think all of us watched a little bit more ecw than our homework because of that this week uh but uh in the meantime i want to give a shout out we got a lot going on over at indywrestling.us not just on the site but our, our partners i want to give a shout out to our friends fight underground and prospect pro wrestling i've had new content coming out every week tonight just debuted Arthur MacArthur against Flex Simmons. Uh, that is, uh, of course, Flex Simmons of the ROH Dojo fame. Uh, so uh, good to see uh, that coming out and the action going on there, uh, as well as uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling has a lot, including Xander Gabriel against Detective David Headfield uh, on Wednesday night, plus the uh, next match in the Quarantine Challenge uh, tournament is happening on Saturday. A lot of fun stuff happening there, plus the podcast is still going. We mentioned some of these heavy issues here. Uh, we had a discussion with Marcus Mann of Rise Wrestling, Laura Loveless, and Tyler Klein about um, uh, endeavoring to have a safer locker room around everything going on. And we're going to have a further conversation with Laura Lovis about some of her uh, uh, locker room encounters uh, in the past as well as a bonus episode this week. Just as a little little, little thing to put out there for the holiday weekend. Uh, so all of those are over at IndieWrestling.us. And, of course, I know a lot of you guys, you know, seen you enjoy the uh, Indie Wrestling Network. Uh, you can check out, while there's not a lot of new stuff happening in the, in the network, uh, we do just have a lot of great back catalogs still putting up some premiere sh shows. And, of course, things I just saw. Somebody sent a picture of uh, the Montreal Theory on a, on a DVD shelf. Uh, in, in Canada somewhere, but you guys can see that as part of the network over there. Uh, f seven day free trial, five ninety nine a month, and uh, we got Rise Wrestling, we got the RWA, we got Premier Championship Wrestling, um, as well as uh, a few other promotions as well. So a lot of good stuff. Well, the, the entire run of Prospect Pro Wrestling uh, live shows is a part of that. So and so much more. So go please go check that out. IndieWrestling.us, IndieWrestling.network. So it's been a it's been a while. Yeah, Charlie, we've been having <laughs> a great wrestling. night. Um, as I kind of alluded to, uh, you know, we talk, we started getting into a little bit last night, and, and I've been having conversations with people, um, you know, fans who are concerned about going to shows. We're seeing what's happening with WWE. Um, you know, I'm seeing there's everything from from uh, Renee Young uh, uh, tweeting about. <laughs> backstage WWE backstage was canceled and the next day she was diagnosed with coronavirus um i i just saw a, a, a you know um a uh, kevin owens uh, actually posted about i believe uh he, her his uh, uh uh grandfather i believe it was uh had passed uh, from uh coronavirus so that's probably why we haven't seen him for a few weeks now uh, uh, no, so sorry, and, and plus the coming out that as many as one to two dozen staff and wrestlers uh, may have been uh, diagnosed as well, positive uh, around the tapings. And this has been a concern for a while. I mean, you know, we talk about AEW has the um, testing, uh, but, you know, the WWE has been blatantly not letting people wear masks on camera during these um, productions. And then, you know, just a few days later, they get this kind of news. Um, they, it definitely... It's like if they if they can't if if the WWE with all their money can't do it right, you know, it kind of makes you wonder if they should be doing it at all at that point, right? Um, uh, Mike, I, I know you, we'll, we'll, you 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 got into it a little bit last night, but Matt, I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Uh, you're feeling with the news uh, over the last week. Uh oh boy. Well, I was apparently muting everybody for some background weirdness. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's or, it's, uh, it was Kevin Owens' father-in-law. Father-in-law. Thank you. Thank you. So nobody, I, I muted everybody to correct me. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, Matt, you're saying. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, this problem is. I mean, this thing is so much bigger than just pro wrestling. Um, yeah. And you know, these companies can say whatever they want to say to convince themselves that they need to be doing these shows, mm -hmm. um, and maybe to stay in business, <laughs> they do some of them, but they're. It's not necessary. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, but, but at the same time, I'm sure from their point of view, it has to happen. Um, and then that leads to what's an acceptable level of risk. Mm-hmm. And given what we've seen over the last couple weeks and the, you know, we've all seen the charts, the things start to go like that. And now you're wondering, I mean, wrestling's been going nonstop since, you know, coronavirus first arrived. So you can't say one is you know causing any more problems than the other, but it's, yeah, it's, we shouldn't be doing this, but mm-hmm. You know, it, it's like so many other, you know, people out there who are wrestling with the financial side of this. They are, you know, doing whatever they can, whatever, you know, they are allowed to do, pushing the boundaries of what's permissible and acceptable to just keep getting their product going, just keep pushing that boulder up the hill and praying that it's not going to start rolling back down the hill on top of them. and. I mean, let's, you know, hearing what you're hearing coming out of the WWE camp within the last week, you're wondering if that's starting to happen. If, you know, maybe they've, maybe all of these guys, I don't want to single out WWE. They're not the only company running shows. No, no, absolutely. Be running shows, so that's not fair. But, you know, it, it was, it's going to happen. It, mm. it was going to happen. And now it's happening. And now what do you do next? Uh, do you pull back? Do you do you pull the uh, developmental talent out of there? Do you get the backstage interviewers out of there and make the wrestlers start shooting their own promos on their cell phones for crying out loud? Mm-hmm. I mean, how many of those people on Raw last night really have to be there, Sword? Mm-hmm. Do the announcers have to be in that building? Do the backstage interviewers have to be there? And you start to you know bounce around all these questions, you know, and, and, and you know how much of this is you know necessary in the yeah. long run. Yeah, uh, I, just get a wrestling show on the air. I I have a question. But before we, if WWE stopped production today, mm-hmm. like just shut everything down. Yeah, do you think AEW would follow suit? I so here's where my argument with AEW is, and I and I I will continue the stand on I you know in this argument as with information that we know now. I will still stand on the hill that AEW is being more responsible than WWE. And we can have a conversation, that, you know, I, I, this is the show to say about whether tests are effective and things like that. And Mike, I know, I know you and I got into that a little bit last night on, on the Monday show, but the fact that they are doing the tests and clearing it, it's more than just a temperature check, you know, and, and, and everything like that, like that feels better, you know, and maybe it's a little bit of, of, of safety theater, to this but yeah. the fact that they do the 48 hour 24 hour whatever it is tests and, and they have the money to do that they obviously uh, both these companies do uh to have everybody that's involved there so when i see a group of people <laughs> standing around there uh, uh at, at ringside like i i don't have that sense of dread you know like i do walking into my grocery store right um that the 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 unknowing and the knowing and also knowing that so many of these people do come from all over so it's nice to have that extra check as well so but but like here's the thing you can have it and test negative okay you can be asymptomatic and spread it mm-hmm. like just testing isn't enough uh, okay okay and right. the only way to avoid spreading it is to stay the heck away from other people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but getting back to your original question, Mike, I don't think, I think WWE and AEW are doing what they're doing for two separate reasons. Um, and if you want to believe, you know, WWE's version of why they're doing it, um, you know, because they want to give the fans something to distract them from things. It's also a, you know, a stubbornness in my opinion, at least it's a stubbornness that comes from the very top. You know, that, that trickles the rest of the way down. Vince is a the show must go on kind of guy. His <laughs> his track record kind of bears that out. Mm-hmm. Um, at the AEW side, um, if you listen to rumors and hear certain things, I mean, how tenuous is their contract situation with TNT? Mm-hmm. Uh, what promises and assurances have been made? I know they got that, you know, extended contract, thankfully, before um, all the lockdowns started, but if they are not putting out, you know, 
live content every week. Is that breaching contract? And are they suddenly back in peril? So like I said, I mean, like, like a lot of other, you know, business people right now that are dealing with all these financial, the, the financial pressures on top of the health and safety concerns is, is a crushing weight of, you know, to be under and trying to figure out your way because you're not just trying to protect your employees. You're trying to make sure that they still have a job tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's it's a mess. Um, It is. And uh, yet the answers are not easy. Um, And like I said, I I mean, in a perfect world, no, there should not be any wrestling shows happening. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it shouldn't be a lot of things happening, but we're in this situation in general. Uh, Farns, well, I want to give you a chance if you had uh, any thoughts on this you wanted to get into. I know I just told you to ride your mute for, for, for some feedback issues, but uh, do you have any thoughts you wanted to share on this? Um, from what I have read, and that's, you know, I, I can't say it's God's honest truth or not. Um, the WWE, like, the Vince is counting on his TV contracts. Mm-hmm. It's where he where he is looking to get the money to come in, and they only have oh so much that they're allowed within the contract as far as a clip show, a repeat of a show, if other before it it triggers. I'm, I I don't say it invalidates the contract, but it triggers a lower pay mm-hmm. for what's going on. So I'm sure that this is financially based from Vince's end. Yeah. Um I I mean you can t- you can take ego into effect, you can take old school mentality, but I think at the end of the day if the TV contract if USA comes to it and says, "Hey, look, it's a bad look on our end if people find out that we're forcing you to do this to maintain a contract, go ahead and show more clip shows or you know, show the best of Raw or the best of Rey Mysterio or the best of whatever until we're able to go, then I think all of a sudden everything changes. Yeah. And AEW, for all of their claim of wanting to be an alternative and wanting to be something different, I think if they could get away with having enough to show clip shows, they'd be doing it at this point. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Absolutely. So, and this is another thing Bradley's uh, hit me up in the chat room here. Uh, while we do have, so we're talking about companies with money that can do everything in their power to make this a safe environment. And also, I mean, and also consider this is one aspect. How many people are, you know, are, you know we call them our first, uh, uh, our first, first line. Wait, that's not the right word. What, what were we calling them? The, the first, uh, Frontline. Frontline, frontline people, you know, at your grocery stores and, and everything like that, and other jobs where people are exposed to others every day. And how much can you do that? How much can you protect? I think you know, probably the biggest thing that we're concerning is these are people in the ring interacting with each other without PPE because they're wearing their underwear. Correct. I mean, that, that's basically what this boils down to in the long run. Correct. Like uh, otherwise, you can wear your mask, socially distance. I mean, the crowd is, for instance. Um, you know, but they weren't doing the minimum of wear your mask in the crowd. Like it, that, that, you know, would, it, it's that interaction, the, the fact that wrestling itself is a danger. Like that's where, like we're all on the same page with that, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, versus, you know, other, other jobs where you can do whatever. Yeah. Cause like you, you can have fans. Mm-hmm. Like I, I truly think you can have fans. Okay. You have to be real, real selective with how you do it. Like right. you have to right. be, you have to sell tickets in clusters. Yes, you have, and you have to ensure that those people who are clustered together are quarantining together. Well, depending if they're not, then they can't sit next to each other. Like, so and now, now that goes to indie wrestling. And full disclaimer: I've worked on two productions in the last month that were closed sets. Um, did temperature checks? Did you know, please wear a mask, please social distance. There was a lot of room in both of those closed sets to, to operate that. Um, you know, everybody went into an understanding of, of, uh, you know, everything involved in that. Uh, so, so with that, there's a lot of conversation because a lot of indie companies, some already have done shows. Um, there was one, I feel like it was a GCW show that was, um, 
uh, over this past weekend. And I remember seeing some feedback on Twitter about how uh, everybody, you know, is an outside show, lots of room, people social distancing, and then everybody came up on the ring at one point, I guess. Uh, so that kind of disqualifies that idea. Uh, there are other shows, obviously in Pennsylvania, we have a lot of restrictions with our athletic commission. Ohio, I believe has shut everything down. Um, and then there's other, other, uh, 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 states like West Virginia that have no rules and others are deciding to do shows. And, uh, from what I can tell, just, just having shows, not doing any of the things. Uh, so like we're at a different, so, you know, I, I often say WWE is the canary in the coal, coal mine, but I think the first couple of shows that have fans on board are the other canary here. And it's just a matter of time. And, and keep in mind, it's not like we're doing better with this virus. No, it's getting worse. No, like, like, like (laughs) we're not even past the first wave of this yet. Yeah. Let alone a second wave. of it. I'm honestly shocked at some of the States that have been like shut down that have allowed things to happen. Um, Mm -hmm. that have allowed, uh, uh, you know, state verified things to happen this early in the game, you know, and, and I'm not just talking about Pennsylvania. There's, there's others too. Um, that's been surprising. Um, so just to, just to kind of put out there, I've, I've gotten a lot of things. So, so as a fan, from a fan's perspective, well, I'll just, I'll just put this out there. If you had, if you had a wrestling show that's going on near you, and I, I think I need the answer for at least a couple of you, uh, uh, would you go be a fan in the audience at a wrestling show? <laughs> <laughs> And there you go. And there you go. I don't even want to go to Walmart, Sorg. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going, Sorg. Yeah. <laughs> Sorg, Are Sorg, you? hold on. I will go on one condition. I am the only person in the crowd. One man wrestling show. I like this. I like uh, this. You to know be, what? That's a new experience. To be fair, anyone who's gone to a show with me knows I can carry a crowd for three hours. That's right. <laughs> Listen, we just need to replace WWE's audience with Mike, and we're covered. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would just amplify him and everything. Mm-hmm. So I'll uh, even learn to throw my like, voice so I can amplify. boo and chant CM amplify. Punk. And... Oh, sorry, my, you what were you saying? Matt? Matt? You just put him in there. Just put him in there. Yeah, I'll, I'll even learn to throw my voice so I can boo and chant CM Punk at the same time. Like, okay, <laughs> we can make it happen. Well, I mean, we're already sweetening the audio on it, so, uh, uh so. Uh, and that's the essential works is that's good there's a lot coming in on the chat about some of these other shows so um <laughs> we can call wrestlers essential workers <laughs> they did no they did no no but like workers oh <laughs> i just i just i just i just but that, that seriously was the line and that's how WWE yeah, got wrestling back in florida they 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 established them in media companies as essential workers and looped them into it so uh farnsworth i i don't know if you you have anything to say on on this one um yeah uh with everything you, you're, you're allowed to, to step out on this one if you want um i i don't want to be around wrestling fans in general so <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait wait this is a pre-existing condition from before the virus correct <laughs> yeah i mean good lord like when when we were running shows and there was no threat of disease it was still disgusting in there <laughs> So I can't imagine being around all of those mouth breathing wall licking idiots and thinking, Oh, I'll be healthy when I walk out of here. So, I mean, if any business wants to go ahead and do that, by all means, go ahead and do it. They've already seen the caliber of people that show up at these things. Yeah. Yeah. You're kind of taking that risk. I I want to point out when I, when I, when I used to work with uh, Farnsworth on a, on a monthly basis, we put him up in the balcony for a reason, guys uh to, to to get some distance so uh you know that was that was mostly by very very implied request so it was so i could do the commentary without gagging mm, mm-hmm. uh so there you go uh so so tina's uh uh well, you know a couple couple of notes in here uh, uh tina is saying that aw has on their side the cons have more additional income uh with the stream with the jaguars whereas wwe is just wrestling and also you know to your point mike about the contracts remember wwe also has how much less income from live events right now plus uh i'm sure we would have had a saudi show by now again um, while they're not losing that money, apparently they will still get that. That was made very clear uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, I think they still don't get that money until they have a show. 
So yeah. they have to fulfill their contract. It's just delayed. So meanwhile, they're not getting as much income as before. So. Yeah, I mean, but right, like as, as we've di- right. no, I'm just as we've discussed before, there are ways to put out new content. Oh, absolutely. I mean, while what- while being socially distant, like you can, like if you're skilled enough, mm-hmm. you can build an entire story without ever needing a ring. That's right. We're, we're seeing more and more of those. By the way, shout like, out to like, but- like shout out to Xavier Woods. Mm-hmm. Battle they they do battle of the brands like mm-hmm. they stopped doing this now I think because of all the coronavirus stuff but if you watch battle of the brands this past season they were getting superstars to cut promos on each other yep and they were having matches on like a video game and building entire feuds based around it Drake Maverick and Drew Gulak had a feud over circumcision mm-hmm. that's not a joke and it's still Probably my favorite feud of the year. Uh, uh, to to that, our, our friends locally, our friends at Rise Wrestling with a Y, they've been doing cutting promos on their Fire Pro shows. They've been doing on Fire Pro video game with a Rise ring. By the way, thank you for the Indie Wrestling US ring. Uh, appreciate that. I may have to get a PlayStation Four just so I could download those because I have it on Steam. Uh, but uh, if anybody knows how to transfer, yes. Have you ever played video games with Shirley Dow? I, not directly, no. So, uh, uh, for those who don't know, Shirley Doe and I have been friends for a while, and uh, playing a wrestling game with him isn't having a match. It is in, it is years of booking and swerves and angles <laughs> and promos and people turning on each other. And what Up Up Down Down is doing for a show we were all doing for the hell of it in the early 2000s. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Hey, you know, hey, they're 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 good simulation main machines to uh, uh, sharpen your wrestling mind, right? So that's great. Uh, let's see. Tina's pointing out that uh, oh oh, and the other thing was uh, the interactive tournament that that's been going on over at RWA, where everybody has been cutting promos. We've been, I think, we're creating feuds out of people. Be based on that 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 fan voting tournament that's been happening over there. So, uh, and also, if you have not experienced Ultra Mega Chris Hello Kitty, um, no, Ultra Mega Chris Taylor, sponsored by Hello Kitty, uh, go over to the RWA's uh, Facebook page and go find those promos. Um, there, there are some really good promos, brother. Uh, but anyways, and we're worried about him in this lockdown situation a little bit. You look a little bit worried, but a little bit impressed. It's a mix. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm checking out some more comments in here um so and i, I think it's a com- well go ahead just just a quick thought on the uh you know the money behind everything um wwe is they don't have to run another house show for the rest of the year they're going to make a record profit this year really okay really? AEW has the cons right okay they've got a lot of money all right. Ring of Honor is owned by Sinclair Broadcasting. Sinclair Broadcasting has a ton of money. Ring of Honor is not running any shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And paying so, everybody. Last and, I knew, they're paying everybody. Like, they're full contracts. So, and as far as I know, the, are different here. You know, and as the, far as two, people, the two multimillionaires who run both those big companies have seen profits in the middle of this pandemic. Mm-hmm. True. As, as most top one percenters have. Yeah. yeah. Except for, ironically, EC3. <laughs> well, I haven't checked on him in a while, but he he was doing some really interesting things. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is he? It, I, I think he's still okay. He's still fine. Yeah, he's probably, I mean, I mean he's, he's, right now. he's fine. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say thriving. <laughs> Rob, Rob points out. Rob points out. WWE owns their venue. Um, yeah. Yes, but they're still doing NXT from full sale. And technically, AEW, while AEW does not directly own the venue, the person that runs AEW does. I have a feeling yeah. they're not paying a lot of rent for it. So, no. you know, it's there. So, I mean, you, you think they had to put in like a, a, a stadium prices to use it for stadium stampede? Yeah, no. No, no. It's just like, hey, it's next door. Go do some stuff. Let's, let's get this pay-per-view over. 
So yeah. it's weird. Um, I, I, I will say if you're going to an indie show and, and again, I, I, you know, I'm saying, you know, we're, we're obviously doing some filming here and trying to do it as safe as possible, uh, uh manner in, in what we're doing internally, uh, with indie wrestling, but, uh, with our friends there, but I, uh, you know, really it, it, this is, you know, uh, if you don't feel comfortable, you know, you can find other ways to support the wrestling that's happening. The wrestlers there are doing things. Um, the rest just have to make a decision for themselves and whether they feel safe to go do it, of course. Um, and, and in a lot of that cases, you know, the, the bug to do it, uh, the inactivity may be worse than going out there for them. And I'm hoping that the ones that are going out there are being safe. Uh, for instance, I did do a shoot with a couple weeks ago and did a couple ones with a couple of clients and I stayed home for the almost two weeks between then and seeing my, my, uh, 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 mother this weekend so um so that's a decision we're making you know uh if i go do the same and and, and end up on another set for that i will i will spend another two weeks before i go visit somebody like my mother or or any other you know uh uh, uh trouble just be be smart about it and, uh, and, and if we're going to a show first of all don't <laughs> um personally that, that that's my feeling on everything i'm more cautious and care than carefree Mm-hmm. Also, you do go wear a fucking mask yes. over your nose <laughs> and not as a fucking chin guard. And don't pull the mask down when you're cheering people on. Boogenhagen. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Boogenhagen. Oh boy. And don't 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 tap the glass. <laughs> Just yeah, like, don't tap just, the fucking just glass. Just like at the zoo, don't tap on the glass, okay? Uh, unless no. you're wearing gloves. Also, do if not you're feed gloves, the wrestlers. Tap the glass all you want. Do not I feed mean, the wrestlers. Did these people never see Finding Nemo? You don't bang on the glass. That's like the, <laughs> the first rule. It just, I just, it just looked ridiculous, and I, 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 I imagine they told him to stop after that. So, uh, but. Plus, I don't think that gla- I don't think that plexiglass is very securely fastened. It's not. They've the already barricade. thrown people through it. It's just there. Yeah. It's really just there. It's just yeah. yeah it's not that there. It looks safe. That's that's where it's at. That's where it's at. Um, is a sliver. Rob, said, Rob says you'll startle the wrestlers. You'll startle the wrestlers. Yes. Everybody is very on edge right now. So be careful with that. Anyways, hey, uh, you know what's you know what's always still good in a pandemic? Uh, pizza. And our good friends at Slice on Broadway here in the Pittsburgh area. Sorry, Mike and everybody else in the greater area. But if one day when we're allowed to travel again, you can swing through Pittsburgh and grab yourself a slice. A supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza here in Beachview, Carnegie, East End, PNC Park. Thank you so much to those guys for supporting the show. SliceOnBroadway.com. And uh, of course, uh, we're gonna we're gonna check in uh, with Katie about something else. You can check out and be right back with the big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. This is Marshall the Bull Gambino, and this is delicious Jimmy DeMarco, and you're listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show exclusively on WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And I really, yeah, I, I, I think you know, you know. Dave Batista set to a nice, you know, Rage Against the Machine uh, uh, music track. I think that could work. Are you, no, I haven't put it that much, but Are you talking about his, po- his I, political tweets? It, if, if you're going to oh. say Batista, I'd set it to a heavy metal hail to the chief. Mm. <laughs> I mean, you got to see what works. I mean, when you find the, the, the song and the lyrics that match up, it's, you know, like I said, it's like a, magic. A, a hashtag vote blue Tista no matter who Tista. That's what I say. Uh, Dave, we're sorry we booed you. By the way, Pittsburgh always a problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Batista. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry I, we were in your question. I mean, I don't think we booed like us in our row. That was I don't think we booed him. Mm. We could we were just kind of standing around watching everybody else boo him in disbelief. I I really don't think you can really deny that, given the fact that you also booed Ray Mysterio that night. Um, but you know, you know. I, what, 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 no, me? I did not personally boo Rey Mysterio. Hey, hey, don't look at me, man. I, I was, I, I was sitting in a place where I was not. I, I, didn't, I didn't pop for anybody that night. I just watched and enjoyed. Mm-hmm. That arena mm-hmm. booed Batista, and they booed Rey Mysterio. Yeah, yeah. And they cheered Roman Reigns. Yeah, There's a they, lot of weird shit going on. I don't, <laughs> Matt. Matt, I have, I have an answer for the big question. 
I want you to take all of John Cena's positivity tweets. Oh, they're so good. And set it to something like uh, the vitamin C graduation song. Oh, uh, or um, the old everybody's free to wear sunscreen. Yes, yes. Or Bob Lerman. Yes, yes. I- I'll accept either of those. <laughs> Basically, I just want you to make it a spoken word a- spoken word album. Is my singing that bad? You don't want to hear my spoken? No, 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 no. I, no, it's a gimmick because I feel like the the title would be "You can't see me, but you can hear me." <laughs> you know, I, I but, wait, wait, just an, came up with the name for the album. Yes, just just an assessment. Like Matt's Matt's not singing singing was pretty on point. I thought. Yeah. And and the right hey, music. Charlotte. Yeah. I, I was uh, I, I had a few performance enhancing drinks before I did that. Oh, so I had to make sure I could let it turn it loose. Oh, oh god. god, Matt, now it's tainted. As far as where they, I, I heard it's tainted. Oh, I can't enjoy it properly. Or on something, Mike. So I mean let's be clear on that. Uh, as far as where they, I heard you trying to break in there. Uh, did, did, did you have a, an idea one? Oh, I was just doing the you can't hear me. Oh, okay. But uh, but if if I'm gonna pick the uh going with that theme, I would say all of uh delirious's <gasps> tweets and do them as a Phantomos song. So mm-hmm. a Phantomos? Phantomos? Oh. It's my one of Mike Patton's bands. Oh. Matt, you can also do all of Delirious's tweets to a Fozzie song. Mm. Because as we know, Chris Jericho speaks delirious. He does. He does. He does. There, there's video evidence. Yeah. Of that. That's it. I'm gonna find it on YouTube and put it in the chat. Worthwhile if you haven't seen that one before. Yes. Uh, and even if you have, worth revisiting. Geez, geez. So, so you were talking about Mike. You said like some of your uh, iconics. I, you know, I, I think, I think like finding some classic Mad Mike hate tweeting impact. Oh, oh yeah. and that can right. be. You can you put that to Limp Biscuits break stuff, <laughs> or anything, or anything off of three dollar bill, y'all. <laughs> That's good. That's good. You know, you know, the angry tweets work a lot yeah. better than the happy tweets. But I, guess I'm intrigued by John Cena inspirational tweets being set to music. That, that sounds really good. These are really good ideas. These are really, really good ideas. Uh, let's see uh, if there's anything in the chat room going on. Uh, some other, some other. Thank you for thank you for spelling out that band name for me. I'm going to be adding yep. that to my YouTube music. Uh, <laughs> How do we keep? T- it, it mostly, uh, Rob is it, Rob is declaring plausible deniability that he never heard that vitamin C song. Oh really? Oh my god! I don't find that Rob. But uh, I don't okay. believe I don't believe that at all. He might have graduated before that. I don't know. I feel like no. yeah, but still, even uh, even if you have out of the country, like literally yeah, yeah, from true. from late April to mid June, if you listen to any radio station that plays even remotely current hits mm-hmm. they're going to give shout outs to the local high schools and play that damn song again mm-hmm. it's like it's like in the station charter mm-hmm. yeah yeah you're sure <laughs> <laughs> by the way sorg i i we need a soundboard no we uh, i was just no, you know, i was just no. saying how much i've been fighting a soundboard earlier on awesome cast tonight for this show sorg we need one and i'm going to and i'm going to tell you why hmm um, so for, for those of you who, who watched the, the Monday mayhem, I've been plugging for the past couple weeks, which is by the, the way, now the, uh, the Monday night warriors, the, the Monday, Monday, May- night warriors. Monday mayhem warriors, we're changing the name like every week now. Cause yeah, we- yeah, it, not, nothing. It's coronavirus. Yes. Anyway. Um, so on up, up, down, down, they've been having the longest games of Uno you've ever seen in your life. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's gotten more and more in depth to the point where they have, they're going to have their own Uno merch, um, their own merch based on these games of Uno and Cesaro bless his heart has, has acquired a soundboard. No. Yes. Oh no. So Cesaro has taken clips from Adam Cole woods and breeze and himself and just, other varying clips from across the fucking planet because he's Cesaro and he can do that. And Sorg, I have to say, it enhances every single episode of Up Up Down Down Plays Uno. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. 
I love it. Because now they're now they're because he like um so they have a, they have a thing in Uno where if someone plays a draw a draw four wild, mm-hmm. you have to challenge it, and every time you challenge it, you scream challenge, <laughs> even if even if like it's going to be a failed challenge. And then Tyler Breeze always says so much respect, so much respect for that challenge. He recorded Breeze saying so much respect, and has played it enough to the point where Breeze's mouth isn't moving. But everyone thinks Breeze is talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> and Sorg, we can do that with this show. Yeah, we, we can. We can bring back past hosts without ever having to call them. <laughs> <laughs> just like it'll just be like Chad the Shad yelling "Fire!" <laughs> yes, or Spear, Spear. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that I'm too. T- Sorg. I'm telling you. And Sorg, do you know what this also means? Hmm. We could bring back Mayhem Missy going good times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sork, we need a soundboard. She was the best good times. Yes. Um, uh, categorically, I I try and fail every week to live up to it. Still have not even come close. Hmm. We need a soundboard, Sork. Well, guys, it is time. We can call it the Sorg board. Don't. Don't. The sound Sorg? No. No, I don't think I'm comfortable with that either. The Sorgus board. Moving on to our homework, our assignment from last week go along with this sword. was uh, from Professor Jacob Edwin. He had assigned us to watch the uh, from ECW's One Night Stand 2005, uh, Psychosis versus Rey Mysterio. Uh, and uh, I believe most of us have watched that Farnsworth. I didn't know if I gave you enough uh, 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 notice on that one, but uh, it's a memorable one uh, on that one. But uh, so, um, Matt, I think you said earlier this week, uh, it, 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 uh, you know, we all just kind of completely watched uh, One Night Stand, didn't we? And uh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I definitely let it play <laughs> for a bit. I, yeah, I, I cleared. I, I, you know, I didn't even cue. I when I went into it, I didn't even cue it to the match that I was there to do the homework assignment for. I was just like, you know what? Let's just let's just start this from the beginning. Mm-hmm. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll sit back and I'm going to watch this. This is a great show. Uh, for the most part, and it's it, it's a slim, trim, two and a half hours, mm-hmm. and um, it, and most of it just flies by. The, the the first the first like hour or so is just like it's fantastic. It's just it, it's so good. Um, so I would just uh say my 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 two bits about the match itself. Um, it's very interesting. The thing that really stood out about this Ray uh, psychosis match is that it felt. I can't recall ever watching a match where the wrestlers turned on the crowd. <laughs> like it's like they, they they're they're out there. All right, Ray and Psychosis are are doing. I guess they're doing their thing, but it's not quite what the fans were expecting. So the fans are getting a little you know, grumble, grumble, grumble. They're grumbling. Um. And so there's a point during the match where it appears that Psychosis and Ray just say to each other, you know what? Screw it. And they just start dropping bombs on each other. And like they start going nuts. And for the next like five minutes or so, they're yeah, it's just high spot, high spot, boom, boom. Psychosis comes off the top or Ray does this thing, and then it's over. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, it seemed quick. It and, definitely uh, seemed quick. It did seem quick, but that was kind of cool because that's what kind of the first few matches were all kind of like that, just kind of quick mm-hmm. um, exhibitions. Um, but yeah, that's what really stood out to me. Like the fans kind of were, were grumbling, and Ray and Psychosis were like, "Oh, you're gonna, oh, you're gonna grumble, oh, you're gonna, are, are you thinking about booing us?" Okay, watch this, and they just flew through their stuff and like got out. I don't know if anyone else kind of got that same vibe, but oh well, they I even mentioned it in commentary. Mm-hmm. Like Foley was talking about, he's like, there were there were a few crowds that if they like if the ECW crowd booed you, you got angry about it, and you, you know, like he he was he was basically telling us what they were going through during the match. Mm-hmm. Like he was saying, like if they boo you, you know, you need to step it up, and and that was right before they did the dives to the outside and everything. But to be fair to the crowd. Ray and Psychosis did not set them up to succeed because there were two major problems at the beginning of the match. One, Psychosis came out with his mask on, which got a big pop and took it off. Mm-hmm. 
And I understand why he did that because in WWE he was wrestling without his mask off. He, I think was he unmasked in WCW or was no, it Triple I don't think he. I think it was Triple A. But the thing is, because okay, I, I recall watching this and, and he took the mask off, and I remember being shocked because I had not yeah. seen that. Um, yeah. And and this was this is Psychosis's first look in WWE is before the Mexico mm-hmm. Cools and all that stuff. So yeah, it, so I think people, were, I think a lot of people were not following AAA in 2005. You know, your general ECW audience in that crowd, even um, not as accessible as it is on Twitch these days, right? So that was your first like, oh, he doesn't have a mask. And then the chance of, and I remember this distinctly uh, before the rewatch, the, uh, cause, uh, yeah, Jacob actually last week just, or last, yeah, last week when he assigned this said, listen to the crowd, it kind of throws things off a little bit. Um, and there's a uh, put your mask back on chant. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, so, so which was like, okay, you know, that's, that's what they hung on to. And I think that that did throw kind of the vibe of everything. That is not the only, again, watching more of this show. And when Ron Smackdown, uh, uh, sit in their seats halfway through the show, every match afterwards is the match is going on and the crowd is saying, you know, fuck you, raw, fuck you, Smackdown, fuck you, Bischoff, mm-hmm. whoever is up there well, drawing attention. Well, well, yeah. the other, the other, uh, I'm sorry, the other big thing that did not do the many favors, Ray came out to his WWE music. Mm-hmm. Everybody came out to and, WWE and that, music. No, but on the live show, like when it aired live, Tommy Dreamer came out to his ECW music. Hmm. Sandman came out to enter Sandman. Right. Like, like they got those licenses for, for the one night. Yes. The only music they didn't change they have Ray come out to his WWE music, and everyone booed the shit out of it. Mm-hmm. That that wasn't setting them up for for success. Like it really wasn't. But Jericho came out to his music, didn't he? Like his at the time music. But it's but it's no Jericho came out to Lion Tamer. Did he? Huh. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty. I don't back. think he. I don't think he can. Oh no! Wait, he might have. I don't remember the live feed, but I'm pretty sure he came. See. If if he did come out to his WWE music, he came out in his ECW gear. Yes, he did. Yes, Ray right. came Ray came out fully formed like 2002 SmackDown Rey Mysterio. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Farnsworth, do you have any recollections? I, I'm not sure if you you rewatched the match recently, but you you had to have seen it back in the day. I I rewatched it for homework. Excellent. Um, the things that stood out to me was a you could tell uh, I like. That was not that. That was the WWE version of Ray mm-hmm. trying to get back to the ECW and even WCW version of Ray. Um, it was a little safer than I think he normally would have been. Um, the other thing that stood out to me is there are just certain guys that can work each other and even on an off night pull out magic like. Mm-hmm. A- AJ and and Chris Daniels or Delirious and Matt Seidel and I think uh, and everyone thinks of Ray and Eddie and they should but uh, Ray and Psychosis I think had that same level of maybe not quite as good as as Ray and Eddie but uh, they knew that they could work with each other and when they de- when the crowd got to them and they decided well let's just start laying stuff in. It uh, you could tell that they knew that they could trust each other yeah. and do some of the things that that I don't know that the WWE Ray would have ever done. Uh, for instance, like I, I know at one point it was telling that they did they uh, uh Ray was over the guardrail and uh, psychosis did but I believe it was a guillotine leg drop off of the top rope. Off the top. Yeah, yeah, the the, so, psych- the psycho guillotine. Psycho guillotine. And yeah. I was looking it up. Uh, psychosis did lose his mask. While he was with WCW, oh, right. oh uh, was he? He was he part of Dirty well, Animals. He, he animals? lost it. He lost it officially in Mexico. Okay, uh, to Rey Mysterio Senior, mm-hmm. and then they had him lose it again on Nitro. Oh, on Nitro, fantastic. Yeah. So, so Psychosis did wrestle maskless on American TV, which mm-hmm. that's why it didn't make any sense to me. Like, if he just yeah. came out as Psychosis, 
like with his without the mask. Either yeah. either have the mask on for the whole thing for the retro feel of it, I, I, or I, don't have it on. At I, all. I think the homage. I understand what they're getting at. They mentioned on commentary about it being an homage to that's what he wore back then, and and I think you know probably consider. Uh, I don't remember him, and at the time watching, I did not know about him in WCW losing the mask. But also, that was probably in the later days of WCW, where yeah. a lot of stuff got lost and in, in, just got lost. Uh, so, uh, so like, either way, uh, this was a good watch. If nothing else, it got us to revisit. It's still a good night, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, I, I, it I'm just like a... good. Sorry about that. Sorry, right. <laughs> I just thought in. I thought you were wrapping up. Um, I overall, like for the whole show, like for me, like when the Raw and the SmackDown crew shows up, like the vibe of the show, like takes a bad turn for mm. me just watching it. Oh, yeah. Like up until that point, it's just like, here's, you know, all the ECW fans, you know, 10 or 15 years older than they used to be just, you know, cheering on these quick matches and it's all fun. And, uh, yeah, but when the Raw and the SmackDown guys get there, it just turns into it feels, yeah. It just it, it just doesn't feel right anymore. And just as I noticed this, uh, there was this meme going around the internet where they were asking people to select, you know, which of these promos is the all time greatest promo. Mm-hmm. And Heyman's promo from this show is one of the promos that's nominated in there. I think it's really overrated. <laughs> to be really? honest with you, I mean, RVD, yeah, RVD has a better promo. RVD has a better promo than Heyman. Yeah. Co-sign on that one, absolutely. Yeah. And Heyman has about a dozen better promos in his life. Trust me, I've documented them. And <laughs> yes, yeah, I think that's on that on Mayhem show, right? Oh yeah, somewhere. Um, yeah. But the point is, it, it it was very salacious and 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 inflammatory at the time. Mm-hmm. But why it today? It just feels kind of like I'm like this is. Well, this is he, not Pete he had he had one good line to JBL. The only reason he was champion for over a year is because Triple H didn't want to work Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I mean, still. <laughs> I mean, and the, the the promo is basically just like it's just Heyman shooting three burns up into the balcony, and you know, you know, just does like he does Bischoff and he does Edge and he does JBL and that's it. He walks away. So I'm just yeah. like, and they all no sell it too. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like the way they reacted to stuff too. But it, 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 yeah, everything involving the Raw SmackDown guys. Well, just JBL, kind of, I think, was perfect. legit drinking too. Because wasn't that also the night where he um, busted open Meanie Hardway? Yep. Yep. Yeah. At the brawl at the end. Yeah. So, oh man, but still some good memories. And and I know Rob brought it up in the chat room. I also have my my VHS copy. That's the only one I didn't give. Well, it's one of the few I didn't give away because I knew that it was that original with the original music. That even the DVD didn't have like the Ender Sandman or anything like that, and and it's going to have those. Had Ender Sandman. Hmm. I need to check it. What's that? I thought the DVD had Ender Sandman. Uh, I, I I thought that's the first I heard they were not happening, but that that was I mean fifteen years ago. So, well, it's time to the find worst, out what's that. The worst, the worst entrance theme in professional wrestling history is the overdub music for the Sandman. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> um, it just. I'm starting, it's a shame. I'm starting to get over it enough to try to enjoy ECW paper. I threw um, well, barely illegal. I think was on uh, uh, that I threw on the TV while I was waiting between shows. So I'm like, you know what? I, and now I just want to watch every Masato Tanaka match. So oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> God, I, I, you can't watch you can't watch a clip from him without seeing like Mike Awesome almost dying. So um anyways uh so we do have another assignment for uh the next week and uh here is a new one from uh the great professor jacob edwin hello wrestling mayhem show this is professor jacob edwin giving you your weekly assignment 2016 roadblock a wwe network exclusive event um everything's a little bit different about this show the lights are different the crowd is is blacked out and uh, the commentary is even a little bit different and a little more technical and the way triple h and dean ambrose wrestle for the wwe championship this night uh, Mm -hmm. is very interesting i think you see something different out of both of them that you might not normally see 
uh, on a regular Raw or SmackDown or even a pay-per-view. This was leading up to WrestleMania and uh, Dean Ambrose would go on to wrestle Brock Lesnar and Triple H would go on to wrestle Roman Reigns at that WrestleMania. And a lot of people were not happy with either of these directions. They may have even preferred to see this match, Dean Ambrose versus Triple H, take place at WrestleMania. So see how this plays out and see how how excitable people are and what this may be a window into the big enough star that Dean Ambrose would then become uh, and seeing now how big he is as John Moxley. Take a glimpse into the past to see what the future may hold. Thank you. There you go. Roadblock. I, <laughs> not... I, I, I my, my reaction was I, I thought he was talking about the roadblock that was here in Pittsburgh. And that's, it was kind of like groaning. I, I remember really enjoying this match. So I'm looking forward to it's... seeing this because this is peak Ambrose in WWE. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. right match, before that Russell. 32 minutes. The match is 32 minutes? The match is 32 minutes. Oh, I got, got it. What do you expect? Mm-hmm. I, I know I'm gonna hate this. I know I'm gonna hate this. So this is different. It is, I mentioned that, that is this, not the right attitude to be taking into this assignment. No, no, no. no <laughs> I uh, trust me. I've done a lot of school. I can know. I I can know I'm going to hate the assignment and still do it. Farnsworth, you're not tied By to this way, assignment. Uh, this this, this pay per view also features an inner circle showdown of Chris Jericho versus. Jake Hager. Ooh, uh, Farnsworth, you are not. It, it, this is not required reading for you, uh, uh, since you're not uh, uh, technically. Unless you want to come back, uh, book next week on the show. Uh, uh, is, is this one you want to revisit? Um, I'll be honest. It's a rarity you're going to get me to go back to a Triple H match. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. Nope. Nope. All right. At that point, let's go back around with what did we learn from wrestling this week, guys? I learned a hate. Oh, oh sorry. I'll, I'll take the lead on this one. I learned it does not take much of a push to go down an ECW YouTube and or WWE Network rabbit hole. Um, just one little taste of one night stand. And I was diving into, you know, YouTube clips of old Taz promos. And next thing I know, I was digging into like 94, 95 ECW. I was searching for Surfer Ray Odyssey. I was doing it all sorg. I was out of my mind. But, um, oh man, that stuff. So good. So good. It, it's, I, I mean, it sucks that the music isn't there, believe me. Mm-hmm. And I know we mentioned that before, but man, just the, the essence of it when it's at its best is so good. Uh, and those Taz promos are on fire. Um, they're great. So, I mean, that, that, that was the biggest thing. Like, like the, the music was the vibe of the show, and now you don't have that. It just that that's where I depart with it a little bit. So, yeah. uh, I also miss having the commercials, the little like uh, uh, the, the commercials whenever you're when they're uh, advertising the, the home videos and stuff like that between the segments, you know, mm-hmm. you get you know, you're watching Brian Lee fall off the scaffold like 13 times during the show, but they keep running that clip, <laughs> you know. Extremely dangerous things didn't happen really that often. It's just they replayed them every week on the show, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, every time something bad would happen, they just run that thing over and over and over again. Hey, 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 here's a good reason. Let's show Sabu getting dropped on his head again. Remember this? This was five yeah. years ago. Let's show it again. I felt like yeah. we spent a lot of time on Sabu being dropped on his head during the one night stand pay per view event. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Farnsworth, what did you learn in wrestling this week? Oh, I... Trying to think of something positive. Or lately. Or lately. Uh, I well, learned that out. Have to be positive. <laughs> I, I. You know, with the. Uh, with the closing of Chikara, mm-hmm. it uh, made me think. Uh, of just all of the, I traced it. I, I've, I have in my head tracing the roots of how certain amounts of wrestling became popular throughout the Indies and whatnot. And Chikara was a big part of that. And I hope that all the guys that are working there uh, find homes and that, and these hybrid styles and stuff that has been picked up from the past can continue to spread. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, you know that. You know, a lot of places closing down because of uh, uh, things coming out about them, and that that was one that hurt on the uh, 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 wrestling fan side, at least, right? Because uh, it, it, it seemed like the biggest betrayal because Chikara seemed like the most pure product out there. You know, yeah, and to hear there's these... no one, there's no one else that's booking stuff that they were doing. Mm-hmm. Like it's, that it just, I don't know. It was a very unique product. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, the, it, only, the only pure wrestling left is Kaiju Big Battle. Uh, I went to the first show they did here in Pittsburgh. And I think I rather would have watched my own autopsy oh, instead of going to another one. I love the girl it. fell off the stage. You know, I, you know, watching them, watching them drinking at the gathering was a really good experience. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just saying, one a.m. and you just have they're cleaning up the ring and the fan and the fans are around. They're like, hit me in the head with the building. Uh, <laughs> they're cardboard guys. Uh, no, they, they, and I'm sad I never got a chance to uh, catch them while they were here in Pittsburgh. I was always out of town or had another show or something. But uh, uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a great crew, and I, I got to talk with some of the kaiju guys uh, around National Pro Wrestling Day. So, um, National Wrestling Day. Well, there's an old gag. This is your other soundboard. Uh, <laughs> but you gotta get Bobby <laughs> saying. It. Jeez, jeez. Um. Oh, we Charlotte, we were having a good time. <laughs> Mike, what'd you learn this week? You know what I learned today? Hmm. Go away, Charlotte, we were having a good time. Yep. That's what, yep. That's what I learned. I learned Charlotte can go away because we were having a good time. <laughs> um, I learned that if there's ever a, uh, a crap reunion tour, uh, Matt Carlin's is opening for us, first of all. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my old rap group from like 15 years ago. Uh, it's, uh, it's on, it's on Apple music. Have fun. Uh, it's, it's the one with the monkey on the cover. Uh, but anyways, uh, but, uh, uh, uh from wrestling, I should have thought about a wrestling thing. Actually. Um, I, 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 I learned I'm going to watch some more Masato Tanaka matches. That's, that's what I learned this week. <laughs> also, um, I also learned that Jericho is going to be a, um, a commentary on fighter fest. Uh, and, uh, that, that's, Fine by me. <laughs> I'm just replacing Jr. D- is he replacing Jr.? No. Well, it's going to be a four-man booth. Oh, that's excessive. Un- yeah, it seems unnecessary, it especially four people surrounding Jr. Who was old and probably just ready to contract COVID. Okay. okay. No, I'm, he's he's in he's in a he's in a dangerous. You know, I I can't oh, think. Yeah. Of, We're worried. He's about it. Oh yeah. No, no argument. No argument. Uh, we're we're worried about him. I, yeah, that's the thing. You can be as safe and, and if you're comfortable with the test around there, he still needs to travel back home to Oklahoma. You know, from Jackson. Oklahoma. So. Spoiler alert: not doing great. No, no. <laughs> like I'll give I'll give NXT this. Morrow and Beth remotely commentating mm-hmm. because they don't live in Florida. Tom- that's what AEW should be doing. I'm sorry. That's what they should be doing. Tom Phillips very lonely at that booth. Uh <laughs> Look at the shots were like, Tom, you're all alone. Tom, you're you're so lonely. <laughs> It'd be really funny if he was sitting next to like uh the like the standees of Morrow yeah. and Beth. <laughs> yes, yes, please. I mean we could have so much fun with that, right? Um, let's see. Bobby also learned that it should should be covered by Good Charlotte, uh yes. your Matt song. Um yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh let's see and if I bowling, have opinions on which ska band should be hired to. Uh, if Bowling for Soup can do a song about Alexa Blish, Good Charlotte can definitely do a tra- song that about true. Charlotte. Uh, Farnsworth Investments, thank you so much for joining us on the show here. And uh, give us a glimpse into your very pink room. This is my very pink room. That's my artwork. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, because of all the bands that are important, the Ramones are the best of them. There you go. <laughs> You think they cover that song? <laughs> I can hear it. Uh, mainstream Matt in the musical endeavors. Thanks, Sorg. You didn't go. Thanks for, uh, thanks for giving me this uh, this platform to share my my singing voice with an unsuspecting <laughs> internet. 
um uh you did not you didn't dunk it you didn't dunk on us uh during the show <laughs> oh you want me to dunk i'll dunk right now yeah go Can for it go? sure okay I'll go right now it's well lit out there okay I'll I'll right I want more. one last thing to say to mad mike all right kobe so, kobe no I, I wanted him to just throw the ball behind him there he goes hold on i got wait, wait, wait okay there we go don't oh. say anything he's got the ball no mike no mike no i can't see it i can't see it <laughs> Oh, we missed everything. I, I, Sorg. I saw it. I saw it too. Oh, uh, we the that was a dunk for two. Matt, we we missed it. We missed it because Matt, we missed it because you weren't making enough noise for it to queue up. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying not to wake up the neighbors, but I'll try one more time if you're open to that. Uh... Why not? Why the hell not? No, now I'm, now I got myself. Hold on a second. See that instant replay. Okay. Hold on. We'll we'll. we'll... Let's do that. Give me some replay. All right. All right. Hit it. And it's good. Look at that. Look at that air he got on that completely set of 10 feet hoop. Completely. That, 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 that hoop. Uh, this is something you guys don't know because it's hard to tell um, on a Google Hangout. Matt All Carlin right. is actually 13 feet tall. Yes, he is. Yes, actually 13 feet tall. It's Matt Carlin. Very difficult to tell that. He is 13 feet tall. There you go. His knees uh, have hit me in the head before. That's the <laughs> just, by walking, just by walking. I hope you got that one because I don't have a third one in me. Okay, that's good. But, 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 but I just want to say in parting, maybe I'm the best. When it comes to sports, that's why I'm in my ball shorts. Ball shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Main st- or Mad Mike for eight three on the tweets. God, Charlie, you'll be having a good time. <laughs> you need a minute after that one. Charlie, we're having a good time. Oh jeez, oh jeez. Damn it, Matt. That's going to be in my head so many Thank times. you, everybody. Please, if you enjoyed this, share the show. Oh. Review on your podcast app. And we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the